Okay, two announcements. Uh, first one, uh, you know, right after midterm exam, I emailed you, right, announcing the class project. Uh, class project got started uh, in, uh, right away. So first, uh, milestone two is tomorrow, okay? Uh, you know, so first milestone is pretty, you know, simple. It is about, uh, you know, environment, you know, setup, experiment environment setup. So you have to install. Uh, you have to install this tool, Qualtus, you know, CAT tool, and also model sim, simulator, Qualtus and model sim. And what you have to do is you simply follow this instruction. This instruction and to you know small amount of you know programming at the end to display your student ID. So it it will be you know very simple. Okay, no uh, no uh, brainer. It is very you know simple. And second announcement, uh, I finished the finished the grading of your midterm exam and. And I'll, uh, I'll announce your, you know, scores uh, uh, later this afternoon. Okay, after double checking your answers. But uh, the average is sixty-six. It is pretty good, sixty-six. And highest, perfect, one hundred. Okay, I think. Uh, Uh, three of you uh, got the perfect, you know, job. Uh, Dong Wook, Hong Gyu, An Hong Gyu, and Jong Hun. So you know, three three student got a perfect score. Uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, I'll. Uh, Post your uh, you know scores on Blackboard. Uh, then you can, uh, if you think you know, something is wrong, then you can come to my office. Okay, probably tomorrow. I'll make that announcement as well. Okay, let's get started. So we are, I think, here last time. Mm. Okay, who is going to? Okay, uh, Dongo, can you please? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, overview. We are going to design a RISC-V CPU that is able to execute the machine code we discussed so far. For the sake of your understanding, we simplify the CPU and the system structure. All right. Uh, you know, I, last time we uh, talked about uh, this simplified hardware uh, block diagram, right? So instead of using this complicated hardware system, we, we will simplify it to you know, these two, CPU and memory connected. And this one, uh, Minji, can you please? Uh um, this five CPU model has separate connections to memory. Actually, this structure is more realistic as we will see when we study classes. We use both, both structure and behavior modeling with Bernoulli and CL. Behavior model, modeling descriptively specifies the module's functionality. For example, modules, modules such as a main decoder, AM decoder, AAU, and a register file world more designed with the behavior modeling. Structure modeling describes the module from simple models via instant solutions. For example, the top module was designed with the structure modeling. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have two connections from CPU to, between CPU and memory. First connection uh, is used to read instruction. And second connection is to access data. Access means you read or write, okay? And we are going to use uh, 
Verilog HDL language to design hardware. And designing hardware, you know, it is not that, you know, hard if you understand big picture, right? For example, if you design this hardware module, okay, then this module has input, right? And some outputs. So designing this hardware is, uh, is very simple in, in a sense that you need to describe the relation between input and output, right? Input output relation, right? Minji, please, you know, turn off your microphone. So, you know, in digital logic design course, what did you do to design this, you know, module? Probably you did this, right? You have A and A, B, C, D input and some output, right? Y1, Y2, Y. I don't know, seven, right? Then what you have to do is you have to draw what? Truth table, right? A, B, C, D, Y, one, two, Y, you know, seven. So you have to, you have to list all possible input cases. If you have four bit input, then there are 16 possible input cases, like, you know, eight zeros and eight ones and four zeros, remember? Four ones, four zeros, four ones, two zeros, like this, zero one, zero one. Then what is the expected output, right? So based on that truth table, you can, disc you can come up with Boolean equation, right? Based on Boolean equation, for example, Y1 is what? Y1 is, one is, one is I don't know, I'm cooking up A, B, C, or, a bar, B, C, D, or I don't know, C, probably like this, Boolean equation. So if you have a Boolean equation, then it's simple, right? You need to draw schematic diagram like this, you know, end gate, three input end gate, right? A, B, C, that, then what? You have four input end gate, right? Four input. And that is A inverted, right? And B like this, and C and D, and so on, right? And then you have OR gate, right? OR gate, that is output. So again, uh, you, you, you have a truth table, then you can come up with you know, Boolean equation. Based on Boolean equation, you can draw schematic diagram. Right? That is how they are designed. So input output relationship, right? Given this input, you are expecting some output. You have input, you are expecting some output, right? And in this class, we don't, we don't want to use, we don't want to take this kind of approach because it is time consuming, right? Labor intensive. I don't want to draw this schematic. I don't want to draw, you know, truth table and Boolean equation and draw schematic diagram. Instead, we want to use language, right? We want to describe that relation using language, right? That is, uh, that will uh, make your life easier, right? So, uh, very low HDL to describe the relationship, right? And uh, in very low, you can uh, use structural modeling or behavioral modeling or both. Okay, let me show you an example. So uh, this one, this one is skeleton, skeleton design. Okay, you can play with the, uh, from with the skeleton. So download it. Essentially, that is hardware system. So what is hardware system? Computer system, uh, computer system. Uh, if you have a CPU, memory and IO devices, then that is, you know, computer system, right? So I already, I think, downloaded last time. So let me remove this, then open this, this one, right? So unzip it. Then there are three folders. The first one, source, okay? So you ha we have CPU, model, CPU, uh, Verilog design, okay, 
So risk five CPU. And then uh, the first one is memory. Okay, first one is memory. Okay, the memory is memory. First one is memory. Uh, fifth one is CPU. And the other two, GPIO, timer, these two are IO devices. Okay, and this file, RB32i system, it is connecting, connecting. CPU, memory, IO devices together. So if I open this, this one is an example of structural modeling. Okay, so why? Because uh, a CPU, right? You have CPU, input output. That is input output port, right? Input port and so output port. And then memory, some input output port listed here, and. IO devices, you have IO device called timer, IO device called GPIO. So it has input output port, this one input output port. And this module RV32i system.v that is connecting, right? Connecting, connecting uh, these components together, CPU, memory, IO devices together, just connecting. And if you go inside CPU uh, design, okay, this one is CPU design written in Verilog HDL. So look at this. So this one is an example of behavioral modeling. Behavioral modeling, okay? Behavioral modeling means this one, behavioral modeling means uh, you specify, you specify the function of this module, function of this hardware descriptively, okay? So once you have, once you have this model, if, you, if you, once you have this, uh, these modules uh, designed, then, okay, CPU and memory, IO devices, okay? Then you need to connect, right? These, you know, modules together, somehow connect, right? That is an example of structural modeling, okay? So each module, each module is designed uh, with behavioral modeling, right? Behavioral modeling, descriptively specify the function, okay? So this one. Descriptively using if statement, for example. If that is true, then second source, second ALU source will be this one. If, uh, if, else if, right? If this one is true, then second source will be this one. Descriptively specify the function, right? Behavioral modeling. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this one. Uh, Hemin, Joe Hemin. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, overview. Microarchitecture is composed of data path and control. Data path is all the paths where data can be traveling through. Data path elements are used to operate on or hold data within a processor. In RISC-V implementation, data path elements include the register file, ALU, uh, MOXs and memory. Control tells the data path which path to take or what operation to do depending on instructions. Control unit receives the current instruction from memory and tells the data path how to execute that instruction. Specifically, the control unit produces MOX select, register enable, ALU control, and memory write signals to control the operation of the data path. Our RISC-V um, implementation is simplified by designing only data processing instructions, add, sub, add, i, and, or, memory, memory access instructions, LW, SW, and branch instructions, B, Q, and J, A, L. Okay, thanks. I think I mentioned uh, this microarchitecture, uh, I think many, many times, I think, microarchitecture, internal CPU structure, 
right? Internal CPU structure. It is like blueprint, right? Not very detailed, but uh, it is providing uh, just enough information. Uh, you know how instruction gets executed inside the CPU. So microarchitecture is composed of data paths and control. What is data paths? The paths where data is moving along, traveling through, right? So that is example, ALU for example, is taking two inputs, right? 32 bit and 32 bit output, that is data paths, right? And control means ALU, this one, right? ALU is able to do many different operations, addition, subtraction, Right? Addition, subtraction, and or XOR operations. So you have to uh, tell ALU what kind of operation you are asking. Right? You are asking add operation, or uh, or what? Or you know end operation, or operation, XOR operation. What operation you are asking ALU? That information is delivered through that control input. Okay. So microarchitecture. Okay, in big picture, is composed of data paths and control. Okay, same thing goes to register file, right? Uh, you are supplying a register number to register file, right? First source operand RS1 five bit. Okay, RS2 five bit. Okay, and then uh, uh, in response to in this input RS1 RS2, register file is providing. Operand, source operand. And uh, we have another port, right? Register file is, uh, register file need write enable signal, okay? Write enable, okay? That is an example of a control signal, write enable, okay? Register file should be updated or not? Depending on instruction, right? If addition instruction, okay? So register file should be updated. So you have to make sure this control signal is one, asserted, okay? When you execute addition instruction. But what if you execute BEQ instruction, BEQ, okay? X2, X3, then you branch it to this label. These two are equal, then branch. But register file is not updated, right? So branch instruction is updating program counter only, PC. PC is separate register inside the CPU. PC. Condition is satisfied, right? Then PC will be updated. Otherwise, no update, right? So depending on instruction, okay? How about, you know, uh, SW instruction, stored instruction? You are updating uh, memory, not register file, right? You are updating memory, okay? For example, like this. Uh, write this data to that memory location, right? So you are not updating, you are updating memory only, right? Restored. So depending on instruction, you have to make, uh, you have to, you have to determine this, this value, this control signal, right? Enable. Okay, so my data path, uh, micro architecture is composed of two, right? Data paths and control, okay? And in this class, in this uh, lecture, in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to design CPU, how to design CPU, uh, which is able to execute, you know, the, only those instructions, one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, sorry, nine, okay? So I'll explain to you, you know, how to design CPU, which is able to execute these nine instructions. The class project is about, what? Class project is about, uh, you know, adding some, some hardware modules to execute not only this, not only this, but also some more instructions. We have 40 instructions, right, in risk 5 okay? So your job is adding some, you know, digital logic on top of that skeleton. So on top of this skeleton design, you add some digital logic. So that the CPU, this is your CPU, is you know complete, full blown, okay, uh, full blown CPU, risk five CPU, okay. 
So it is like you know skeleton. So to your your in other words, your uh, your mission is to make it like human. It is a skeleton. Okay. So you know add some flesh and make it like you know, human. Okay. Machine but human, right? Analogy. Okay. Okay. So some. To explain the, uh, the skeleton code, skeleton design. This one. Look at the name, right? RB32I underscore system.v, this one. Okay, this one. That is located. And TB, test bench, that is including the design, this design, okay? Uh, though, so, you know, rb 32 i system, computer system is composed of CPU, CPU and memory. So it is not showing IO devices, only CPU and memory. It connected through two connections. The first connection, second connection. First one is for reading, instruction, okay? CPU is providing address. In response, uh, memory is providing instruction, okay? And then second connection. So in case of store instruction or load word instruction, memory access, right? Then you have to provide memory location that is delivered through that connection, okay? Other connection for data access. And when it comes to a memory read, like LW, right, road word, then data is provided through that bottom connection, okay? When it comes to store the instruction, you have to provide not only memory location, address, right? Also data. So address, data are provided through that connection. And inside the CPU, you know, you, we have instruction patch module, okay? And decoding module, decoding is what? Decoding is interpreting machine code. Interpret, right? Once you have, once you have instruction, once you have instruction inside the CPU, instruction inside CPU, CPU should interpret that machine code. Or other, in, in other words, you know, decode that instruction to figure out, okay, what I should do. Do I have to do addition, subtraction, okay, and or operation, memory access branch? What do I have to do, right? It should decode that instruction, interpret that instruction. Then we have a register file, ALU, and some modules, okay? So let's talk about this. This one, Minjong, Minchang, can you? Instruction execution in CPU. Generic steps of, this of the instruction execution in CPU. Fetch uses the program counter PC to supply the instruction address and fetch instruction from memory. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, thanks. Uh, I like you to I like you to think about what kind of steps, what kind of steps CPU should take to execute each machine code. I like you to think. Okay. So question is. What CPU should do to execute each machine code, right? First obvious step is instruction patch, right? Instruction patch. CPU should read machine code from memory, right? And machine code is read from, based on that program counter. Program counter is indicating, program counter is pointing the memory location, right? Memory location where you have to read machine code from, right? So based on program counter, uh, program counter, CPU read machine code. That is a first step, right? And what is second step? Minchan, can you? Decoding the code's instruction and read reads operands. XRP OP code, determine what operation should be done. 
extradal parents uh, registered numbers or immediate from fetch instruction? Okay, second step. I like you to think, right? So what is the second? What would be the second step? You have machine code inside the CPU. Second step is called decoding. Okay, decoding step or interpretation step. Okay, decoding step. In decoding step, by looking at machine code, you look at the machine code, right? For, exa for example, R format instruction. Think about that. You have a machine code inside, right? You have OP code. Uh, I for forgot the format. Okay, so let me show you the format. Okay, that format. Okay, I don't have to write. So look at this. By looking at uh, this uh, encoding, that instruction is inside the CPU. Okay, so by looking at OP code, function seven, function three, by looking at these three fields, you can tell, right? What operation CPU should do, right? And based on RS1, RS2, you can read source operands from register file, right? So in decoding step, decoding step, uh, two you know, big things uh, will be done. First one is, uh, figure out what operations CPU should do. How do you know? By looking at OP code, function seven, function three, right? By looking at these three, you can tell, right? What operation, addition operation, memory read operation, branch operation, what operation, right? And second thing uh, CPU should do is uh, uh, operand preparation, source operand preparation, right? By taking out, by taking out that RS1, RS2. So from machine code, you can take out, right? You can take out RS1, five bit, take out RS1, RS2, and supply these two into register file. Then in response, register file will provide you know, source operand. Okay, operand preparation, source operand preparation. That is done in decoding step. Okay, so again, the first step, you have to read machine code. Then based on the machine code, you have to decode that instruction. What would be the third step? Okay, uh, Min Chang, can you please? Execution, use ALU to calculate depending on instruction class. Arithmetic or logical results, memory address for load and store, branch target address, access memory for, for load and store. Okay, thanks. In the next step is execution. So we know, right? CPU now understand what operation it should do. Right? In execution uh, step, uh, actual operation will be different depending on instruction categories. So we discussed three categories of instructions. First one, what? Data processing. Data processing instructions, like addition, right? subtraction, right? and or. Second, uh, memory access. Access instructions. Okay. And the last one, branch instructions. So based on these three uh, different categories, the actual operation CPU should do is different. Okay, when it comes to uh, data processing instructions, like addition instruction, right? addition, simple, right? Uh, addition operation, what should be done in execution stage? Uh, operand are already available from decoding step, right? Source operand are available. So in execution, you know, using ALU to you know actual data processing, addition, subtraction, end operation, or operation. Simple, right? Data processing operation, data processing. How about memory access instruction? What kind of operation CPU should do? Think about LW. One example. What kind of operation CPU should do? Uh, you know, operand X3, operand 
uh, are already available from decoding step, right? Immediate. So using sign extension logic, the second operand is available. So what you have to do is you have to compute memory location. So X3 plus four. That will be done by using this ALU, right? X3 plus four. Then that is memory location, right? That is not the end, right? Using this memory location, you have to access actual, you know, memory, right? So in in case of memory access instructions, in execution stage, right? Execution stage, you have to compute memory location based on this. Compute memory location, then access memory, right? Then update register file. That should be done in execution stage. How about branch instruction? The last one. What should be done in execution stage? Uh, let's play with this example. X3, X4, then this label. Uh, you know, think about that branch instruction. You have to compare these two, right? Compare these two to, uh, to figure out, you know, you, uh, you, you, you have to take this branch or not, right? You have to compare these two. That will be done uh, in ALU as well, right? ALU is taking X3, then second operand, then do subtraction operation, minus sub subtraction X3, X4. If the result is zero, then branch should be taken. You have to branch, you have to branch it to label two. Otherwise you fall through, right? So in case, in case of branch instruction, first one is a branch resolution. Resolution means, do you have to take this branch or not? Taken or not taken, okay? And second is, that is not the end, right? Branch instruction, you have to compute branch destination. This label, location of this label, right? Destination computation. Destination. So resolve taken or not taken decision using ALU by doing subtraction. Okay. And then destination computation. Okay, branch destination, right? PC plus what? PC plus sign extended immediate. You remember? Right? This one. This one will be destination. If a branch is taken, then program counter will be updated with that information. Otherwise, you know, PC, PC plus four, right? PC plus four, next location. Okay, so in execution stage, execution step, uh, actual operation uh, is different depending on instruction categories, okay? Then, then uh, you need to uh, read next instruction, right? So this one is generic step, right? Generic step you have to take to execute each machine code. First, read machine code, okay? Read machine code, you have C uh, machine code inside CPU, then decode that instruction, okay? Decode means you have to prepare operand, source operand, and you have to make decision, it can control signal, okay? So prepare this source operand and then determine that control signal, okay? In execution stage, uh, actual computation, memory access, or branch resolution, right? They do stuff. All right, uh, does it make sense? Uh, any question? Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's uh, start with instruction patch. We are going to design CPU incrementally, starting from patch instruction patch logic. Okay, again, we design instruction patch logic first, then add some digital logic for decoding, okay? After that, we are going to add some, you know, digital logic for execution, right? So we will 
incrementally design CPU. Okay, let's just start with instruction patch. You know, instruction patch is very simple. Look at this. So based on based on program counter, program counter is register, right? It is composed of 32 flip flops. Register, right? Register is uh, it's kind of memory, right? Is memory, right? You are storing some information. So program counter PC register. You have a flip flop clock D and Q. Okay, sorry, sorry, two of them. Sorry, two flip flops. Sorry, two flip flops. Right. So I don't want to draw 32 individual flip flops, right? Uh, instead, I, we are going to use this, you know, this uh, symbol, okay, this notation, slash 32, okay? So input, output, that is the place. That is a program counter, PC. Place where you store program counter information, PC, okay? Program counter, uh, you have to supply reset input, okay? Reset. Okay, reset button. Okay, reset button. Uh, so that you can initialize this, uh, the initialize this output value. For example, when you turn on the computer, when you turn on the computer, where does it start from? Okay, so you, you can make it, okay, I want to start it from zero, location zero. Okay, okay, no, I don't want to, I don't want to start it from zero. I don't, I want to start it from one zero zero. You can do that also by using this input reset and set input here, set, set input. For simplicity, uh, we are going to uh, initialize program counter to zero, okay? When you reset the system. So for that purpose, you need, you know, reset input, reset input. And based on that, you're supplying memory location, okay? And then machine code is coming in. Machine code is coming in, CPU execute it. CPU decode and execute, okay? Then what should be done? Your memory, machine code, it's here. You have addition, subtraction, uh, you know, and so on, right? So you are reading location zero, location four, eight, C1014 and so on, right? So you're supplying location. So you're reading first instruction and decode and execute. So CPU, you know, uh, CPU is done executing the first machine code. Then CPU need to read next machine code. Okay, plus four position. So you, you, you need to have this adder, this adder is doing uh, plus four operation. PC, right, PC, PC plus four. PC plus four, that will be connected to flip-flop input, the input. So next rising edge of the clock, okay. So let me, the first time, so let me draw detailed a uh, timing diagram. That is a little confusing. Uh, if you are uh, new to hardware design, uh, you know, world. So for that, uh, to understand that, you need to draw schematic diagram. Okay. So let me draw. Let me place. Uh, let me. Okay. I don't. Do I have to draw that? Okay. Let me quickly draw. So you have PC register, PC, okay, Q, okay. That is supply to memory. And we have adder four PC. So that will be PC plus four, PC plus four. That is connected to this input, the input. 
like this. Simple, right? Very simple design. Then probably you are confusing, right? At the rising edge of the clock, flip flop, right? It is taking picture. It is like a camera. So you are taking picture at the rising edge of the clock, right? What picture is input? Input to, you know, Q. So to understand, to, you know, understand that operation, you need to draw this one. Let me draw. That is clock, right? Clock. And then pro and counter at the beginning, right? At the beginning, let's say. Start from zero. Zero. Talking about this location, PC. Okay. And then let me draw that location. Uh, that location. This location. Let's name this. Uh, let's call this wire. This wire, Johnson, right? Johnson. Call this wire. Uh, PC. PC next. PC uh, next. Let's call this wire PC next, Johnson, right? This Johnson, this wire PC. So PC next. Okay. I'm drawing this very carefully because, uh, you know, super important, uh, super, super important. This timing diagram is very important to understand, uh, you know, the exact the operation of this this hardware system, hardware block diagram. So PC next. So it you, sh you should go through this uh, adder, right? This hardware component. Then that means it takes time. Once you provide pro and counter, and four, and AL this adder, it takes a little amount of time to provide to output this you know this this result, right? So PC next will be like after a little delay, after a little delay, the delay, okay, delay. This value will be four. Okay, I'm trying to emphasize this delay, this delay, delay, right? Delay. It takes time to provide this output, right? And then because of that delay, look at this, rising edge of the clock, rising edge of the clock, the data, right? this data, data is very stable, look at this, across, so before and after, right? It's very stable. So at the rising edge of the clock, you are able to, store that input to this output like this. So that will be four. How about that? Think about, you know, you are taking picture, picture of your friend with a smartphone, right? I explained to you, right? Using this smartphone, you are taking picture of your friend, when you press the button, when you press a button, your friend supposed to be not moving, right? Stand still. If your friend moves, when you press the button, then what happens? The, the image is stored in SD card is not clear. You don't know for sure. It is your you know, you know, current girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, you know, ex-boyfriend, current boyfriend, right? You don't know for sure, right? So when you, when you take a picture, Look at this. When you take a picture, right? At this point in time, at this point in time, you are taking picture, picture of your friend. Picture of your friend, picture of your PC next friend, right? Your friend supposed to stand still, do not move, okay? Do not move before and after I press, when I press, uh, press the button. Do not, you know, do not, it is not moving, right? Before, before some time and after some time, it is not moving because of that delay. You are pushing, this is a signal. Okay, and I deliberately also drew this pro encounter, this delay. What is this delay? The flip-flop delay, 
right? Flip-flop delay. It takes a little amount of time to store this input, this, this input to this output. Flip-flop delay. Delay plays super important role in digital design. Right? Delay, right? I'm trying to emphasize. Then uh, you have a PC, four, right? Four. Four plus four, eight, right? So PC next will be eight. So, you know, delay after little delay, four plus four plus four, four plus four, eight. So when you take, when you take a new picture, when you take a new picture at this, you know, point, at this rising edge of the clock, you are taking picture, okay? Store into, Q output. It is very stable, right? So before, after. Okay. It is not moving. It is not, you know, changing. Very, you know, stable. So delay. I'm trying to emphasize the importance of delay. Okay. Delay time. It takes time to compute. It takes time to store. Smartphone. It takes time. Right. When you press the button. When you press the button with smartphone, it takes a little bit of time to store the image into the SD card, right? delay, right, delay. So that is our uh, program counter logic. Then the question is, how would you design that schematic diagram? How would you, that, how would you design schematic diagram using language, Bello HDL, right? Simple, look at this description. Uh, we have a uh, default clock reset, clock reset input, clock reset input, output, program counter. Output will be this program counter, okay? This program counter. That goes to memory. So this one is our CPU, CPU, right? So we have this output, input is clock and reset is default, right? Reset is default. Default input, clock reset, default input uh, signals. Okay, this one is PC, PC. Okay, so we uh, specify the input, clock reset, PC output. And there is the behavior, okay, behavior of that logic. If reset, look at this, always, how do you, how do you read this statement? Always, do this, always do begin and end. Always do this, uh, this uh, description this statement. When, this one, when at, always, always do this, always do begin and end, right? This, this body, when at, at, Pass edge clock at at this time, right? At this at this positive edge. This one is positive edge. It goes up, right? Pass edge. This one it goes up, and this one in Verilog it goes down, right? This one is called neg edge, negative. Pass edge, neg edge. So in this description, positive edge of the clock do this. Or, or what? You have, okay, you have one more. Passage reset. So reset goes up. So this reset, reset goes up. Okay, when this event happens, these two, right? Either this event happens or that event happens. And do, you know, that. So reset event happens, you know, one time, right? When you turn on the computer, right? So reset, uh, reset is one. There is a reset is true. Program counter PC output will be zero. Start from zero, okay? Otherwise, if you release the button, reset button, right? You press the button, computer reset button. You release the button, then no more operation. 
floor encounter will be PC plus four. Is PC will be PC plus four. How about that? This one maybe it will be confusing because the PC PC right PC PC. PC plus four will be stored. Okay, PC plus four. It is PC plus four. PC plus four will be stored here. PC. Okay. Uh, okay. So time eleven twenty. So. So let me show you some demo. So going back to this, uh, the uncompressed uh, skeleton, skeleton design. The first one is again, uh, first folder uh, is containing uh, hardware design, right? And second folder will be used to do hardware simulation, simulation to, to you know, to simulation is used to uh, used to debug your design, okay? Uh, if you are new to hardware design, you know, chances are very high, you know, chances of, uh, you know, you know, very high chances of uh, not working, you know, correctly, right? Your hardware is not working correctly. And so you have to run simulation to, to find the problem, you know, problem point. So that will be used to do hardware simulation. And this one, SYN. This one is used to synthesize. Synthesize. Verilog described module into actual hardware. So we are using this already statement, right? Then somehow we need to, we need to translate that description into actual hardware. Okay, that actual hardware, that actual hardware, right? This one, this actual hardware. So that step is taken care of by Qualtus CAD tool. Our Qualtus, to Qualtus CAD tool will convert this language described design into that actual hardware. That step is called synthesis. Synthesis in Korean Hapsong. Okay, you are synthesizing this uh, uh, design into actual hardware. Okay, synthesize. In software world, if you write C code, right? If you write hello world C code, hello C, then you are compiling. Okay, you you are using we are using this uh, terminology compile compilation to get machine code, right? Machine code. So compilation is translating a high level description into machine uh, machine code, right? In hardware world, we are using this terminology, language described design into actual hardware, synthesizing, synthesis. So last folder, is used to do synthesis. So go into synthesis folder, then open up this Qualtus project, this one. Using this Qualtus something, let me use this one. So if you uh, expand this and double click this, and that is the system, RV, 32i module, RB32i system. So system contains right, CPU and memory, you know, IO devices. So look at this, it is listing those hardware modules, right? It is listing uh, these different hardware modules. We have CPU here, double click this, CPU. And data pass module and controller module, two different modules. And that is designed, okay, here. Controller, scroll it down, and then scroll it down further, and data pass. 
Okay. So if you uh, if you click on this, click on this system, then double click RTL viewer, then it is showing schematic diagram like this. Okay, schematic diagram of that module. So look at this. We have CPU. CPU connected to this memory, CPU connected to other hardware module. So if you double click, okay, go in, okay, we have CPU, data pass and control, okay, skeleton, you know, design, double click, you know, data pass, for example, because we have, you know, some hardware, okay. So Qualtus, this CAD tool, synthesized uh, language. Uh, a very log describe, very log, you know, design and showing you this schematic diagram. So you look at this, we have ALU, right? We have ALU, then we have register file here, right? Register file, double click, for example, ALU, so ALU, right? So we can go in. So, you know, Qualtus translated very low design into that, that, you know, hardware, hardware, actual hardware. Okay. So let me show you, let me send this design, okay, instruction patch design into uh, here. Time module. Let me overwrite, let me completely overwrite this design with the instruction patch like this, okay? And then one thing you have to be careful is top this module name, this module name should be same as this project name. Otherwise, a Qualtas will you know, complain and refuse to translate. So make sure this one, RV32I system, okay? Then uh, click on RTL viewer to see how Qualtus translate that instruction patch module to actual hardware, right? So RTL viewer. Look at this. So it looks like uh, we have flip flops, right? So we have flip flops and then adder. It's your adder and the one input, look at this Q is connected to this input and other input is this number. Okay, so it is actually four, right? actually four. So you, if you, uh, sorry to be number, but four, right? Four is what? In binary, uh, zero, one, zero, zero. 28 zeros, right? 28. 28 zeros, but Qualtas somehow displays uh, this number uh, this way. So what is this? What is this? Two, right? Is it two, right? Two, if, if you invert, right? Uh, position is inverted, right? Like this, zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero, 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 zero like this, right? So even though we, uh, Even though we specify here, right? PC plus four, four, it is showing that number different way. So it doesn't matter, okay? So that is the one, okay? So once you have hardware design, then you can, uh, you can send it to Qualtas to figure out, you know, to see, you know, how that design is translated to actual you know, component. Okay, you can play with that. Okay, I'm trying to explain that here. Mm, okay, memory. Okay, probably I need to talk about that uh, too uh, for the first milestone. Mm, this one. Jong-un, Do jong -un.
오케이 박하영 memory um as studied in the computer logic design memory is classified into ram and rom um ram is classified into dram and sram ddr is a kind of dram ddr is a short form of uh, double data rate sdram um ddr is used as main memory in modern computers we use cyclone to alter our fpga specific memory model because we port our design to the cyclone to FPGA. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, memory, right? So in our uh, desktop system, we use uh, DDR. Smartphone, desktop, notebook, we use DDR, right? Double data rate as main memory. But in this class, we are not using that as main memory. Okay, we are using, for class project, we are using uh, this one as a, main memory, right? Cyclone, uh, uh, FPJ specific, the main memory. So if you go to here, yeah, roll back, okay. So we are, that. this one is memory, our memory, okay. Then you can, okay. okay save it. Okay, so let me exit, then uncompress this one again. I think I messed up because I overwrite, I, I overwrote that uh, design with instruction, instruction patch logic. So let me uh, delete. Let me remove this folder. Okay, then uncompress it again. Okay. Synthesis folder, then open up Qualtas project. Right. So this one, uh, this one is main memory, our main memory. So how I how I created this main memory? Double click this. Okay. Uh, using the tool. Okay. This a mega wizard is provided by this Qualtas. If you open this, if you click on this, using this one, using this mega wizard plugin, I created this my own memory. So let me let me show you. So memory. Uh, the important thing, okay, for now, important thing is if you go next, look at it, memory initialization. Okay, okay, memory initialization. Okay, this one. Next. Okay, this tab. So this one is important. Uh, memory initialization, okay? What content you want to store at the beginning, right? So uh, initialize this memory with that file, inst underscore data.mif, okay? So again, initialize memory with that file, okay, mif. Mif is memory initialization, right? Mif, memory initialization file, MIF, okay? So if you go to the Eclipse, then compile this code. Compile this code, let me, let me clean. And then compile it again. Then look at this, it is providing, it is generating MIF, instruction data.MIF. So uh, that will, this file, this file will initialize the memory, okay? The memory connected to CPU. So CPU will read first instruction, second instruction, third instruction, and so on, okay? So this is the one.
So skip this. Uh, we are not using you know, this generic memory model. Instead, we are using Altera, this FPGA specific memory, okay? Which is this one. Uh, okay, this one. Mm, Songju. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. uh, as mentioned, we use a Cyclone 3 Altera FPGA specific memory model because we port our design to the Cyclone 3 FPGA. Professor Sa has created a memory model using Mega Wizard in Quartus 2. To initialize the memory, it requires a special format called MIF. Professor Sa wrote a Perl script to generate the MIF format file. Check out my file for synthesis and simulation. Just copy in data MIF2, RV3 to I system sim, and RV3 to I system sim directories. Okay, thanks. So who wrote this Perl script? Uh, I wrote, right? I'm the, I'm the author, right? Uh, I wrote uh, those Perl script, this Perl, right? Look at this, yeah, bin two hex, Perl, hex two MIF Perl. Okay, go to this, this one. This one, this Perl script and that per script to make your life easier. That per script is gen generating uh, MIF, okay? So compile this code, this, this C and assembly, okay? Based on the machine code binary, uh, this per script is generating uh, this MIF, okay? Memory initialization file, okay? So uh, let me show you a demo of uh, Demo for the first milestone, okay? So, so we are using this Altera, okay? Altera uh, D0 volt. Altera, this one, the, the big you know, component here, that is called FPGA, okay? From Altera. Now, you know, Altera is part of Intel. Intel purchased uh, this company, Altera, uh, five years ago. So it is Intel FPGA now. Uh, so uh, that this board called DE0, DE0 Development and Education Board, DE0 board, and that is connected through uh, that is connected to PC through that connection USB. Okay, this USB, okay? USB, and that is connected to my my uh, that you know USB slot. Okay, this is the one. Connected to this board. Okay. And then turn on. Okay, turn on like this. Uh, then if you turn on the board, uh, then Altera, oh, sorry, Quartus. Okay, this project example. Okay, uh, project uh, will recognize that, that board. This again, again, this Quartus CAD, this Quartus CAD tool, this this tool, okay, will uh, you know recognize uh, this D zero board. So you can access this D zero board through you know, uh, this uh, Quartus. Then uh, once you have hardware design ready, okay, by compiling, okay, change something, change some hardware design, then you have to synthesize or you know compile here. Compile the design, then generate uh, some you know alpha file. That alpha file will be downloaded to this Quartus, okay? FPGA. Sorry, sorry. Cyclone three FPGA. Okay. So how to uh, how to download it? How to download generated uh, hardware into here uh, program device? Okay. Then uh, you. Uh, you have to have this USB blaster listed, okay? Otherwise, you can set up hardware setup, okay? Then select USB blaster. That is called USB blaster, okay? Then uh, simple, okay? Select this. Uh, then start. Okay. Then five will be displayed. Five. 
Okay, why? Because I uh, wrote that program, right? That program is, example program is loaded uh, in MIF, okay? So how to change the program? Okay, so, so this PowerPoint, right? PowerPoint, once you have MIF generated, okay? Once you have MIF generated, you need to copy that MIF to synthesis folder and simulation folder, these two. So let me uh, let me uh, play with an example. So class project here, synthesis simulation. Down. I'm providing uh, example a project. This one, right? This one. So download it. I I think I already did. Okay. Then open it. Okay, let me use the one I downloaded. So here, unzip it. Some example project. So if you open, so let me bring in, let me bring in that example uh, project into the Eclipse. Okay. Eclipse, file, new, uh, make project with existing code, right? Existing code. So location, uh, download, right? F location, right? Download, and this one. Download, and this one is the one, right? Mix. Okay, select this folder, then finish. Then, you know, you have uh, these files listed. So look at this, assembly and C code. So assembly is simple. It is calling jump, right? Jump some segment. What is some segment? This function. This function is uh, very simple. It is displaying, it is displays, you know, number five, seg five, number five to the first seven segment. Okay, five, right? How, how come? Check out this, you know, header file. As a file uh, to display number zero, you need to use this one. Uh, uh, number zero, you need to use this one. Uh, number one, this one. Okay. Seven segment zero one two three. Zero one two three. So let me uh, change the code. So let me add some some more. Seven segment, uh, about one. I want to display some number in seven segment, one. What number do you want to display? So how about uh, seven, okay? So now it'll be seven, five. Seven, five will be displayed. So compile it. Then MIF will be generated, right? So we have MIF generated. So what you have to do is you have to copy this MIF to both, both synthesis and simulation folder. So copy, okay, here. Let me first copy to synthesis okay, because we are not doing simulation, okay, here. So after, uh, Overwriting, after overwriting MIF, okay, overwriting MIF, look at the date, okay, November 1st, okay, after overwriting uh, MIF, you need to re uh, synthesize this hardware by clicking start again, okay. So just for your information, MIF is very simple, you know, format. Look at this, the first location, MIF. Oh, MIF is, you know, I I removed, right? I removed, okay, let me do it again, let me. Okay. Clean, build. So MIF, 
Uh, file format is very simple. First, uh, word location, zero, memory location, zero, one, two, three, four. Address, right? Location, that is machine code. Machine code, first machine code, second machine code. So that is a word address, not byte address, right? Location zero, this machine code. Instruction, second location, this machine code, and so on. Okay, very simple. Right? So how many, uh, how many uh, instruction? Five, 12, five, 12, right? So we have, uh, we have uh, hardware generated. So now, Open up, then start. See, seven five, right? Seven five displayed, on seven segment. So your mission is your mission is what? Your mission is you display you know last four digit of your uh, student ID, 학번, right? That is a mission, right? So basically environment setup. Oh, okay. That is for uh, today. Uh, any question? Okay, I guess uh, that's it for today then. See you. See you on Wednesday. Okay, bye.